What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today bringing you guys another episode of the Madden 15 wish list here on my channel. And what we're actually going to be talking about today is ways that I believe that Madden 15 can improve cards. Now, for those of you who are like me, who haven't been playing Madden Ultimate Team for years, and then, again, guys, this is my first season playing Madden Ultimate Team. I'm having a lot of fun with it but I can still see some ways to improve it. If you guys are like me and you're looking for ways to improve it, I think that this video is for you. Now, the first thing that I wanna actually talk about in specific is actually the fact that there are just too many versions of cards in this game. And specifically what I'm talking about are the player cards. Did you guys know that there are actually 18 different Colin Kaepernick cards in Madden 25 Ultimate Team? 18. Yeah. And I know there's cer special circumstances with the Colin Kaepernick versions where, you know, he's got like the, what, the next gen cards, I think they were called. And I get it. Yeah. He's got a lot of them because of that. But even if you remove those, that's still, what, a dozen Colin Kaepernick cards or something like that? That is just way too many. I know Colin Kaepernick's cool and all, and I know a lot of people like him. He's the, the quarterback for a, a great team that's really popular right now. But at the same time, do we really need that many versions of Colin Kaepernick? And that doesn't even include the fact that he could have hypothetically been one of the golden ticket cards. There are a ton of San Francisco fans out there, and I know a lot of people make quarterback uh, golden tickets this year. So, I mean, realistically, we could have had more versions of Colin Kaepernick, 19, 20 versions of Colin Kaepernick. And I get it. Yeah, we want to make sure that there are plenty of cards. There's plenty of content in Madden Ultimate Team. But really, we don't need that many versions of individual cards. Let's reduce it down a little bit. Would anybody be that upset if there were just like six versions of Colin Kaepernick? To me, that's still a lot. But can we like settle on six versions? Can we make it so that he gets like a, a gold card and an elite card and maybe a fantasy or two, a playoff card, and that's about it? Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be great? Maybe we give him a ghost card or something like that. I, does he really need more than that? And if somebody wants to make him a golden ticket, whatever, fine. We can't really control that. But if we're Madden, why not make less versions of Colin Kaepernick? It just, I, it blows my mind that there are that many versions of him specifically. But there are other cards that are kind of the same way as well. And then meanwhile, we see cards where their first version of a card in a game is the freaking final edition card like justin hunter for example he doesn't even have a gold a silver a bronze he doesn't have a playoff nothing road to the play none of those cards he has nothing until the final edition why i know justin hunter is not some superstar or anything but he was a relatively known player at least during the season he started to become more known couldn't we have put out another version of justin hunter at some point in the season and again i i understand he's not a star nobody's out there thirsty for a Justin Hunter card or anything, but do, couldn't we include one of those as opposed to the freaking 11th Colin Kaepernick card? Uh, it just seems so crazy to me that they would include that many versions of certain cards and like nothing of other ones, and then they only get a final edition card in the very end of the game. And then at that point, it's like, what, he's in the 90s, but throughout the rest of the game, you didn't give him a single card? It's just crazy to me. I'm blown away by it. I would like to see fewer versions of cards, more versions of other cards, but let's just even things out a little bit more so that certain players don't have just a ton of cards in the game. Next thing, we need to get rid of rookie legends. And I think other people are cheering while I say this right now. Rookie legends are stupid. It makes absolutely no sense. Why are so many legends 80 overall? There, I think there was only one Thurman Thomas that was like randomly 85 overall, and I'm sure there was a reason for that, but I didn't really pay attention. All the rest of them, as far as I remember, are 80 overall. How many of those guys would actually be 80 overall if you were to give them a rating on their rookie season? Not that many. Most of them were pretty decent right out of the right out of the shoot because then they started to become superstars in the NFL. And I understand. We want to give plenty versions of cards, but do we really need a stupid 80 overall rookie version of Legends? It just seems to me like the only reason that these were actually included in the game was to take up your Legend spots in the game when you're opening up your packs. So when you open up a Legend pack and it's guaranteed X amount of Legend cards, you actually only get rookie Legends. 
<laughs> that's pretty much what happens most of the time. Yeah, on occasion you're going to pull a better card than that. You'll get a 94 John Mackey or something like that. But why not include those in the game? Why not just have those be a little bit more common? Because practically nobody's using 94 Mackey at this point. But I'm telling you right now, everybody pulls that stupid Thurman Thomas or the Steve Young rookie card or Lawrence Taylor rookie card. It's pointless. Nobody can even use those on their team. Nobody out there is starting those players at this point in the game. But we're still pulling them in these packs that are going for 56,000 coins each. It's just crazy to me. I, I can't... I can't fathom why they're even in the game other than to just fill up those spots uh, to, to make it so that you don't get anything good in packs. And that's kind of frustrating to me. Uh, why not do something, instead of having those cards be in the game, why not do something like, say, boost the odds of collectibles in, in the game? And what I'm talking about specifically are the collectibles that are used to get a nice card. Like, for example, your legend uh, collections and things like that. A lot of those collections are really, really tough to find the collectibles for. And it makes it where it's basically not an option for you to pull the pack or pull the actual cards out of packs because you will practically never get all of them. You would need to open up thousands of packs to be able to get all of them that you need. So then you end up having to go onto the auction block and buying the specific uh the collectible that you need to finish the collection or collect the bowls in a lot of cases and then you go on there and some guy's got it completely price fixed for 10 times as much as it should go for and you're just sitting there going oh my gosh am I ever gonna finish this am I ever gonna finish it and sometimes you never do sometimes you forget about it it's just so irritating to me the collectibles should be a little bit more common than they are in, in the game and also why do we have it so that some collectibles just randomly get taken out of the game? Like the fantasy collectibles. Why are, were they out of the game? It just doesn't make sense. It, they basically made it so that you couldn't do the collections anymore. I mean, realistically, you really weren't able to find those cards anymore. And if you were, they were so obnoxiously expensive that it wasn't even worth it. You might as well just buy the card that you could get once you did the collection. So to me, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to have all these collections in the game and make it so that the collectibles are so extremely, extremely rare. I would like to see them boost it a little bit more and then we could remove the rookie legends so that the packs are a little bit more evened out. I think that's a fair, uh, a fair trade-off and uh, hopefully something that they're able to implement into next year's Madden. The next thing that we need is fewer 99 overall cards. And I know a lot of you are shaking your heads at me right now, those of you that played Madden 13, and you're looking at me and going, dude, we have like half as many 99 overall cards in this year's game than we did last year. And I get it, and I'm not trying to hate, but at the same time though, it's still too many. <laughs> we still have way too many 99 overall cards. And I think that a great example of this is the FIFA community. I haven't looked at the FIFA cards recently, and I don't play FIFA Ultimate Team, admittedly, but I also know that FIFA Ultimate Team is becoming extremely, extremely popular. You go and look at some of the other YouTubers that do FIFA commentary, and you see they've got millions of subscribers. I mean, we're talking millions of subscribers. The biggest Madden guys have only got a couple hundred thousand. I mean, the FIFA community is massive. But they're playing a game that, to my knowledge, still does not have a 99 overall card in it. That's insane. And, and maybe now they've got one or two 99 overalls. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't paid, like I said, I haven't paid close attention. But I know that for the vast majority of the year, it was there weren't any 99s, period. Like, the best card in the game was Pele, and I think he was 95 overall or something like that. And that card was going for insane prices. Insane prices. Like, more than Barry Sanders prices, just to put it on comparison. So to me, I just it makes all the sense in the world to stretch out the, the distance between your bad players and your good players in Madden. So you might be having more 40 overall, 50 overall, 60 overall players, but then you're not gonna have quite as many of the 99 overall players either. So what ends up happening is that you're actually excited when you pull a 92 overall card. It's actually usable for your team, even if your team's really good. Imagine that. Imagine that. To me, 99 overall players should be reserved for players who are practically perfect. And I understand, at the end of the year, we want to do positional collections. Fine. Put your 99 overall players there. Ultimate Legends. Fine. I get it. Golden Tickets. Fine. I get it. Other than that, there should not be 99 overall cards. 
It's just all there is to it. There really shouldn't be. There's absolutely no reason that you need 99 overall cards up until that point. Let's create a difference between some of these players. At this point, having like Charles Woodson, who's my number one corner on my team, Charles Woodson's 99 overall, the Madden 25 edition. But he is unstartable for many people because their corners are significantly better. They're a better 99. I mean, it's just so silly. It's so silly to have the 99 overall ultimate legend Deion Sanders be the same overall attribute as the 99 Charles Woodson because they're just not comparable when you look at them head to head. They're, they're, it's just night and day. The Deion is so much better at basically everything. So to me, Let's stretch it out a little bit more. Let's create a bigger difference. And I think that that would make for a lot more fun content. And not everybody would have a 99 overall team. You'd need to actually work your chemistries and that kind of thing to even things out. And I just think it would make for a funner, uh, more competitive environment with the ultimate team versions. Next thing, we need to see fantasy cards that are a little bit different. Okay, so I don't play NBA 2K. And I might get into it, we'll see down the road. But for right now, I don't play NBA 2K. But I know that there's some cool things that they do on their, whatever it's called, my team or whatever. I don't, I forget what it's called. But they're, it's basically ultimate team, right? You open up packs and you put together a team. So they actually have a thing, my friends were telling me, where your card will actually vary in value and, and maybe even in attributes based on how they're performing during the season. And I thought that was such a cool idea. And it's something that I think that Madden should implement. I mean, they already basically do it, right? They do every single week, Madden will update their actual in-game rosters and they'll up, upgrade players, they'll downgrade players based on how they've been performing and how they performed in the previous week. And so to me, I think it would be really awesome if they would do that in Ultimate Team. If they make a specific version of a card, say, say it's the fantasy version of a card, and it doesn't have an overall attribute just assigned to it. The first, when it first comes out, let's say JJ Watt, for example, had a really great game. He might start off at 96 overall. And if he has another really good game, he might move up to 97 or 98 overall, right? But if he has a crappy game, then he might drop down to a 90 overall. And maybe we even make it lower than that. I mean, there's really no reason that it has to start off that high, but I know how Madden is. I know that they're probably not going to implement what I said a couple of minutes ago with the lowered overall cards. So it would be nice, though, if we could actually kind of play the market a little bit. So if I know, for example, that Adrian Peterson is going to be going up against a defense that he absolutely owns. Let's say he goes up against the Cowboys or something, and my Cowboys, we're just so bad on defense, right? So I know Adrian's going to be going up against the Cowboys next week or in a couple weeks. Well, I might buy Adrian Peterson when he just had a really tough game against say the Seahawks and he only got 50 yards well the value of his card he might only be like an 88 overall but I know that after he's done running for 300 yards against the Cowboys that he's going to shoot back up and his price is going to go up with that as well so it helps me actually play the market I get to almost play fantasy football with my cards and I think it would just be a lot of fun. It would make for a really interesting environment because we'd actually get to see uh, people making predictions kind of before the games even happen. Almost similar to, to what we saw with the draft cards uh, earlier in this game. So anyways, guys, I want to hear what you guys have to say. I hope that you guys like my suggestions. If you do, make sure you press that like button. Also, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And let me know if you guys have any suggestions to improve cards as well. Thank you guys again, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.